Taylor was We are on Twitch, we are not live, but you can leave a like, comment, subscribe, turn on your post notification bells. Let's continue to grow the family from Chicago to the UK, man. <clears throat> and before we even get into this, man, I ain't even gonna lie to you. The following presentation is intended for mature audiences. It contains graphic descriptions and crime scenes of crime scenes, adult language and dialogue, strong language, viewer discretion is advised. I gotta change these, I got new ones. Today, we're doing that today. Uh, I don't glorify, sensationalize, condone, blah, blah, blah. You see it, YouTube. Come on now, leave me alone. Let's get into this, man. This is Being Born a Gangster. Jimmy Tippett. This is a podcast. This is brought to us by Liquid Bullet Productions. Let me subscribe, man. First of all, let me subscribe, leave a like. Because I practice what I preach. Don't believe that. Let's get into this, man. I was watching something and they kept bringing his name up. So, you know, well, let's not. Why not? So, what's it, what'd that mean? If you're an engineering leader, you probably aren't thrilled when your finance team asks you. I forgot to turn it on again, the ad block. Oh. This is, this is, okay. One minute and... Part one. Two parts. Welcome to a special edition of Liquid Bullet Productions. I'm Roy Vincent, and I'm going to tell you why it's special today. This is my first interview uh, for Liquid Bullet Productions, and I have a very special guest today. He is the son of Jimmy Tippett Senior. He's a gangland boxing legend. He's here today with us, oh, and uh, he's also an underworld associate. He's very well known in the criminal and gangland fraternity. He's also the uh, author of the book Born Gangster. It's Jimmy Tippett Junior. Nice to meet you, boy. And you, mate. Thanks nice for coming. Time, That's all right. Absolute pleasure to have you on. And I've been trying to get you for quite a few months. I know. Do you know what it is? I, I, obviously, I'm selling my mum's house. My mum passed away last I year. I heard and condolences uh, from everyone. Yeah. Well. Was just, I was grieving and I was going a bit wild and a bit, a little bit trying to sort of get my head again together. But obviously, yeah. I moved away, got myself sorted up north and uh, yeah. enjoying life. All settled now and uh, cracking on. So, how's life treating you? Very good, yeah. Working, uh, you joined that in a straight pound though, and uh, no, we had some good people, I've got some very good friends up here. My daughter lives up here. Lovely. And it's nice, nice. I'm back in the gym training and that. So, Excellent. Are yeah, you looking well? I mean, I'm doing my dad's book, The Real Deal, so. That's coming out soon, isn't it? When yeah. are you looking forward to that? Uh, I'm writing that with a, a best selling crime writer called Julie Shaw, who's right, written okay. like 20 number one bestsellers. Well, don't so forget, ho hoping to get that out in March. Yeah, we'll, we'll have that out for you as well. We'll advertise that for you. So as soon as Thank you've you. got that up and done and ready, let us know. And uh, we'll, we'll get that out for you. But we're going to jump straight in. And um, tell us a little bit about your dad. My dad, well... Okay, jump straight in. That's what I like to do. Oh, even dad, even dad, all right. Jump straight in after three minutes. Let's go. Everyone knows me dad. It's No, my dad, he, he was like a folk... He's like a legend, really. He is a legend. Yeah. He was best best dad in the world. He was like... He was like... To me, he was like Superman. Yeah. He was like, he had, a, he had a presence around him. He was, uh... <coughs> he reminded me a lot of John Gotti. Really? Yeah, he, 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 he held himself a certain way. He was always immaculately dressed. And he, he had a lot, he had a, he, 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 tons of charisma. If he walked in a room, everyone knew he was in there. Yeah, yeah, And yeah. they all stood up to greet him. He, he, it was like, it was like... So he's like a great leader. He's a great leader. He's someone that people wanted to be. Someone that people seen, no matter what. Okay. You know, I'm a movie star when I was with me dad. Whenever I was off school or it was a Saturday morning, I'd want to be straight away with me dad. Because really? it was like, I felt like everyone was looking at him and I wanted to be just like him. Yeah, yeah. It's like yeah, Paul Stockton a... spoke about him on one of your podcasts. Yeah, he did, yeah. And it, it, my dad was like mesmerising. It was like, he, he, he had such 
something about him. And it was all he was to do with the unlicensed boxing as well, wasn't he? No, he was a, he was a, he was a professional boxer, me dad. He, and then he got involved in the unlicensed fighting with his partner Eddie Richardson. That's right. Yeah, he got yeah. he did get involved. They, done, they, 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 they had their own boxing shows at the Downham Tavern in the 1980s. Yeah. So he Downham. was a professional. Then he got into the unlicensed stuff. Tavern. Yeah, Downham Tavern. Oh my God, I remember going. Oh, he's to the raves. Yeah, 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 yeah the, the raves. raves. Were they the brilliant? They were Jacko the best used times. to put on the raves. Yeah, yeah, Jacko. yeah, yeah. Jacko, Tony Wilson, the DJ. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, them were the days, weren't they? I can remember them. They were brilliant days. But let's go sort of dive straight into where did you grow up, Jimmy? I was born in Lucian. And I grew up on the Ferrier Estate. On the Ferrier Estate? Clifford Ferrier Estate, yeah. The concrete jungle? Yeah, and just, so we lived next door to Jim Davidson, the comedian. Really? So, but then obviously, in the, in the late 70s, my mum, she didn't want to live there. She said to me, she was a lot younger than me, Dad. And she said, look, love, I don't want to live on a council estate, blah, blah, blah. So they ended up getting a, a nightclub in Bromley, the Old Beavers. Oh, yeah, yeah, which yeah. Was, which was called, at the time, it was called Talk of the County. Blimey. So my mum and Dad bought that nightclub in Bromley, in Whitmore Road, yeah. and then they bought a house, their first house in Hay. So wait, they, they was living on a council. Was they? What was y'all living on a council for if y'all can afford a club? Like just because? Just because it was cheaper? Forty two Marden Avenue. So right. I met the guy that owns that now, Robinson. Uh, Mickey Chapman. Mickey Chapman. Yeah. He, well, no, it's, it's his son. He's running uh, it. Son, yeah. it? One of his sons is running it. I think. Yeah. Yeah. Excellent. So where, where was you sort of growing up? Where did you grow up? So I grew up in Hayes, Kent. But obviously at the weekends I'd go down, my dad had a speeler, which is like the legal gambling club, where they play kaluki, poker. Yeah. Uh, so I used, I, was, I used to go spend my weekends down there. Wasn't that good? I'd done that with my, I mean, we used to call him Pop, but he was my granddad. He used to have, because um, we was all from the, uh, we used to hang around a lot down the East Lane. Yeah. You know, near Wharf Road. Yeah, of course, that. yeah. And he had the illegal betting office in uh, Manor Place. Now we used to go there. My dad used to little... box it at Manor Place. <laughs> you know what I feel like I'm watching? Uh... Peaky Blinders or something like this is like a recap of Peaky Blinders. Like this stuff really be happening? Peaky Blinders is based loosely on real stuff from the UK, huh? It's Bob's. Wait, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's it. I remember. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we used to go down there and um, as we was little, <coughs> kids, there was, I mean, there used to be thieves in them days. They used to nick everything. Didn't Hells, they? Yeah, so yeah. It was like uh, going into Aladdin's cave when we used to go to the shop. <laughs> And all the boys were sitting at a green felt table and that horse racing in the background. He used to take bets for the horse racing. That's what we did. We did a game called Donuts from uh, Peck. Exactly. I mean, he was doing it. He was, he was marking up the Tony Bell on the, on the chalking up on the board. Yeah. And then they had all, they had all, all like the Frenchies, the Smiths from Bedford. They'd all be playing Kaluki. And they'd sit there. And, and there was uh, Ronnie Easterbrook. He was someone who played a big part of my life, Ronnie. He was the one who had to shoot out with the police. Do you remember in 1987 yeah. in B James? Yeah, in Woolwich. And he got shot by the police, and they, they, they had the shit, he was shooting at him, Tony Ash got shot dead. Yeah. yeah, Jesus. But I grew up with Ronnie, because he was always at the... It was back in the day when you could do that and still live. Like, do you do that now? It was raps, buddy. Spiller. Yeah, so yeah, all yeah. my mates were going out washing cars for like, all day long for a fiver, and I'd be up the spill on a Saturday, just yeah. doing a few teas and sandwiches, yeah. and Ronnie go on, one of the Smiths, go, yeah, there's a score there, Jim. That's it, And like, yeah. a score in like, the 80s was like, it's, it's, it's like, like... I've seen that a good fellas, like, isn't it, yeah, when he puts that money it, it, in his Because they all had their cashmere jumpers on, all had their little pinky rings on, all their nice car yeah, 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 watches. Yeah. And it was yeah. just, that was, I think that was my sort of... I don't know, it was my... It was, I felt like Emily out of Goodfellas, he was like, yeah. being around all these villains. I did. Is and then you'd see them all up the snow call and then we're fucking about and obviously my dad would walk in and he was like and everyone would go quiet. My dad was like poorly, you know, yeah, like yeah. my dad would walk in and everyone would go right, quiet. Got, yeah. And yeah. It, no, but it was it was great the great greatest years for me with the eighties growing up. It yeah, was, I mean born, born 1970 I was. I think you're about the same 71. age as me. You're fifty or seventy one. Yeah. So you're yeah, about the same age as me. <coughs> um so I was in that area and it, you sound like you had a very much the same life as what I did. Really oh I had a great and my mum and dad they was I mean my mum she tried to deter me from going one. I loved the spill. She didn't like me going up there and being around those sort of people. But I thought because of my dad and who his friends were, I'd mix with their children. Yeah. So, it, and then obviously it, we weren't like, if, if my dad was a bricklayer, I'd mix around with other builders' sons. Or builders yeah, sons. Yeah. That's true. That's true. Because we. You gonna, whoever your people is, you're going to mix around with their kids. They, you know. Product of your environment, okay. That was what he really was. It was all his friends were big, like bosses and crime bosses. So I'd mix with their children. Of course, you can't get out of it. So yeah, so like yeah. my mum and dad's friends were the great train robbers and like the Brinks Matt robbers and Charlie Richardson, Eddie Richardson. So we'd, 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 we'd hang around with their families. Yeah. The, the well, they, they say, didn't they? So not only was your dad a gangster, everybody around them was known gangsters. 
Known, not little ones, known, big time. Okay. Hey, if it's in your blood, it's in your blood. Of course so, it is, yeah, yeah. I know I sort of grew up with that same sort of thing, but what was it like having a, fa you know, having your, your, your father figure like your dad, uh, who's well-known and popular in the underworld? To and... be honest, it, it probably tempted me to my little fucker, really, because I could do what I wanted, but... <laughs> this dude... Let me move. Let me get... Best editor on the platform. Let's move around to... Let me... Maybe I can just get out the way. Hold on. Am I out the way? No. Um, out the way right here, but not a not, okay. That's good, right? Y'all can see me. <laughs> and then you had that, then you, like friends of ours, it's Paul Stockton and Johnny Lister, as like, they like the little yeah, boys and probably, boys, but they yeah. used to always look at I was always up to no good, and they was always like getting me out of trouble. This is me trying to read the uh, closed caption, the subtitles. When I was a kid and that, so I always had it. I, I, I could do. It was like I was given the keys to the city. I could do what I wanted. Yeah. yeah. And like with no sort of, it really turned me a little bit naughty, really, because it, it gave you like sort of a license to steal. It did give you sort of half a license. And yeah. You did learn. That's what I worry about with my daughter, man. Because like me is like, it's just being me. Like a, like she gonna be like, all right, I'm gonna go get my daddy, and then she gonna really go get her daddy, and her daddy gonna pull up, and it's just gonna be me. 6'2", 250, all muscle. <laughs> from the rack, from Chicago, got Chicago artillery. All right, let's get into it. Yeah, 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 looking back are, now, yeah. some of the things I've done, I, I'm yeah. appalled of. It's, ever since I've lost my mum, my mum was a very hardworking lady. And when she died, she, sort of, she, she really looked after me and she sort of, she said an awful lot of stuff to me. And I, I've wasted a lot of years down to cocaine and yeah, bad, bad to see me life yeah, and yeah. silly prison sentences, being mad the wrong people and being used, like, obviously because of it, my name and what it can do for me. But no, now I, I, I want a totally different life. It's, I, love, I don't love the nice life. I still go out. I've got a beautiful girlfriend and, yeah. and we, we have some lovely nights out in London. We, we travel the world. But it's, I, I'm finding life quieter now. It's, yeah, you've got to step away from it, haven't you, sometimes? Of course, yeah. I don't mix with criminals much. anymore. I've, I just yeah. paid a big pocket fine off, which yeah. is proceeds of crime act. That, that's been hanging over me for 10 years. I've just paid that. We'll get to that in a minute. Yeah, but, 10 um, years. What was I going to say? Um, <coughs> what sort of age was you when you sort of realised you, you, your naughty sort of age started? Eight. As soon as I was out of nappies, really. <laughs> yeah, as soon as I was out of nappies, I was always a naughty kid. Around about sort of what age did you start your sort of your what, what, naughty, naughty stuff? I think I was at school, it was like, I remember that, like someone up the spill, they, they went, I see what you can do with that. They bung me like a soap bar, you know, like a, a, the old cannabis resin. Yeah. And he went, sling it in the microwave for about a minute. He said, break, cut it into little chunks. He said, you'll be able to do that about ten as a chunk at school. And he'd give it to me for free. And I thought, and all the kids were going wild for it. And I thought, fucking hell. It's like, I've been up the spill and I've, I've heard, like, I've heard a bottle, like, just for, like, like a two, huh? Just being you. And, and, just for, and I'm 12 years old. <laughs> and, then, like, and then, obviously, all the stolen gear would come up there or they'd give me the moody watches, and, and I, I'd just be, like, knocking it all out. I, it, it was, like, it was brilliant. I loved it. Yeah, I know. Does it seem you? It is quite an euphoric moment, isn't it? I mean, yeah, I, and, I obviously, they get, and then you start becoming well. getting into designer clothes, going out with girls, and, obviously, I started boxing, but... He started love. He fell in love with the lifestyle, huh? He fell in love with the lifestyle. Boxing weren't really for me at first. It weren't, no? It weren't. I had a talent for it. Obviously, it was in my blood. My, yeah, grandf yeah. my grandfather was a bare-knuckle fighter, and yeah. his father was a bare-knuckle fighter. Like, I was a great... I was a good little fighter, but I never liked the idea of being a super featherweight. Yeah. As I said to you, it yeah. was... <clears throat> I used to watch Mike Tyson, who was my idol. I thought, oh, I want to be just like him. And my dad said, son, you're, you're a featherweight. You're yeah. a super featherweight. I went, dad, no, no. He was son, that, listen. And I hated the word because I thought he, he looked muggy. Yeah. It's the same old, like, crime, boxing, and, and, and money. It's the UK, man. It's the UK gangster for you. Yeah, that's but the yeah. thing is, looking back now, I see if I had stayed at Super February, I'd have knocked anyone out. But yeah, but you can't need. Uh, so I used to put, I used want. to put weight on to, to, to try and get as close as I could to welterweight, yeah, yeah, which, which was like silly. But yeah, because silly because yeah. I, I couldn't win. But I, I'll try my best. I give it all I had. But I fell into drugs at an early age, so yeah. Yeah, I think we all did as it happens. It was um, the ease and the raving and the coke. Yeah, yeah, that started in the. Uh, the sort of, late I, 70s, I, I, I sort of did it about eighty nine ninety. Yeah, I mean that was that was the prime time. <coughs> I, think I, was, I think I was sort of eighty seven, 
I lost nice my thing, 90s. Mate. I put the 90s. I, if I could delete any part of my life, it would be the 90s. Delete really? it, really? Is that your yeah, regret? Really bad, really bad. I went through a lot of times with my mum and dad not talking to me for periods of That's the whole 90s? Time. Yeah, yeah. I really, really, I was like living from sofa to sofa. It, I was, it, it wasn't a good time for me. It, I, I really hit my all time bottom low. Hey, stay drug free, man. Drugs will do that to you, no matter how much of a grip or, 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 or no matter how much of a, um, oh, I'm a fully functioning, da, 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 nah, man. That's gonna grab you. Really? I ended up doing all my first prison sentences, yeah. getting around the load of gangsters who, who were no good. They was using me because of who my dad was. They'd have me around them because it's, they, they, they ain't got to pay, they're getting the name of my dad, like protection, yeah, like for yeah. nothing. Yeah, so, and I was, I was severely used. And I'm a bit bitter and twisted over that. But obviously you live and learn and you see that these people are, there's no honor amongst thieves. No, nah, none at all. All this, oh yeah, 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 yeah. Listen, they're all grassy as soon as look at you. Yeah, listen, cool, they're all, they're, the drug dealers all grassy, that person to get to. <laughs> Y'all see 6 9 and Gunner. Hey, you said the same, there's no honor amongst these when you get caught. Mm -hmm. It's, it's, there's no law, way. Eh? Nah, not As soon as someone's wife yeah. goes to prison, they're the first ones around, they try and look after her in, in, in other ways. Yeah, that's the way it's going this day and age, I know. But when, when did you actually think that you was different? Or when did you feel that you was a little bit different from others? Fuck, as soon as I was at school and it was being told off. I, I know, because my mum and dad was always, they, they spoiled me wrong. Right, yeah, they'd yeah. Give me, they'd, we did get a lot. If I yeah. wanted a mini motorbike, I'd got it. If I wanted Yeah, this, no one else did, did No, no one did, no. And I was like, <laughs> and, all the, and all the kids were around the house, and then we had horses, and then yeah. my mum and dad went from a three-bedroom semi-detached house. This is around the Brinks Matt robbery time. Yeah. And both my parents are dead now, so I'm not implicated. Brinks Matt robberies. We got to do that too, man. I got, I got, I got the documentary, but I just don't. Uh, if I watch it and I can't post it, and it gets blocked, I'm going to be upset. <laughs> I mean, anyway, but uh, no, after the, the Brinks that time, we moved into a big five bedroom detached, like a uh, Tudor style house in Keston. Oh, right. Which yeah, was man. like the Beverly Hills of Kent. Of course it was. If yeah. you lived in Keston, you was like, that you, 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 that's it, yeah, you made it. Yeah. You'd, you'd made it. It was the multi minute, it was the millionaire's playground. Yeah. But no, we moved up to there, and my mum and dad, it, life went a lot, lot better then. Yeah, it sounds like it as well. I mean, what what sort of inspired inspired you at this age? What was the inspiration? Um, as a as a kid, I was just I was I would never revised for, for. I used to treat school like a like like a party. I'd go there to have fun, knock out all my little bits and pieces, and follow a few of the girls I liked around, and, and just see me friends and have a laugh. I didn't take it seriously. Yeah, I, I feel like I kind of did that too in school. I never really went like. Mm, let's go concentrate. Let's go get good grades. You know what I'm saying? I would I would do what I had to do to pass, but I was going more like for the females. Man. I ain't even gonna lie. I was in school strictly for females. <laughs> you feel me? Like for what else? I'm in high school. I'm here. Trey, I remember with the careers officer. She went, "What do you want to do?" Well, I want to be like my dad. She went, what does your dad do? I went, well, he gets up about 11 o'clock in the morning, he puts his suit on, yeah, that's it. goes to the snooker, has a game of snooker, goes for breakfast or lunch with his friends, goes to the pub, comes up as a sleep, and then goes out to his nightclub. She went, I'm afraid, Mr Tippett, real life isn't like that. I said, well, it is. I watch my dad do it every fucking day. She went, <laughs> <laughs> and straight away, it was like, that was my thing with, uh, sort of, uh, what is it, sort of, uh, your elders who, who were trying to sort of put you on the right, my road and I just thought, nah, this ain't for me. Yeah. She wanted to give me a job in a bank. Oh, I was thinking how to get the money out of the bank without working. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it yeah. was, uh... It's in you, it's just yeah, that, it's just it's... that your, your mind sort I of ticks over. I was born naughty, and I died naughty, yeah. Yeah, I mean, obviously you have to step out of that. Literally, naughty by nature. You know, the <laughs> zone every now and then. Oh, listen, it's, it's, it's lovely to today. be, it's lovely to be the way I am now and look back. I mean, my mum's death really, really in, 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 had a big impact on my life. Yeah. I nursed her for a year with cancer. I forgot to tell y'all we are partnered with the Blueprint Mastermind. Don't forget to go over there and leave a like, comment, and subscribe. We do do the group podcast over there and, you know, stuff like that. And if you're looking for any of my old videos, I had to delete them off this channel. They are over here on Facebook. Anyway, it's back to the regular scheduled program. I got to do more of these podcasts. Y'all used to tell me to do them all the time. It's pretty interesting. I ain't even going to hold you. It's, uh... Uh, and I saw a lot of people come out of the woodwork and scrounge, because my mum had a lot of money, right. and they scrounged around her, and she was a bit, wasn't too there at the end of it, and I feel that a few people who were close to her 
took liberties with her. Really? Yeah. Yeah, it's not good. Uh, no, and I feel, and, and, the, and my, dad, my dad would be turning in his grave if he could see it. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah, I, know, I can well imagine. But the thing is, I, I, got, I got well looked after, but it's, uh, and I've got, I've done a few ups and downs, but you live and learn. I mean, look, I've done wrong in life, it's... What, um, what sort of criminality did you start off with? I worked for a gang in South London, uh, funny enough, just like driving about, like we'd, I'd drop a little bit of work off here and there and I'd get paid on, on, on each bit of work which was dropped off. And then, then it, it's... So you was a brown bag boy? Brown bag boy, pick up, make deliveries, get the money, bring it back, brown bag boy, okay. Started moving, there was a little firm of our robbers, they would like, they would do their bit of work and then ask me to move one of the cars and it went from doing that to going on a bit of work and having a cash box and... And I found it really exciting and, and the thrill of it. The all. thrill, yeah, yeah. and I was lucky. I got nicked on a few, and I think I was very lucky because it put the wind up me a little bit. Because I yeah. saw a few pals get fifteens, <laughs> really, and there was like a family friend of ours called Perry Taroli. He was always in and out for our robberies in South London. Yeah. Very when he says I seen a friend of mine get fifteens, is that like fifteen years? A prolific hard robber. It's gotta be that. <laughs> and obviously with the Brinks Mac boys all get. Go get you some water, Jimmy. Jimmy Junior, please. In big sentences, Brian Robinson, yeah. uh, close friend of my dad's. Yeah. And obviously, uh, Ronnie Easterbrook getting shot uh, on the bit of work and then getting yeah. a life sentence. Yeah, I knew Brian, yeah. And uh, yeah, we, and, and all, all, all them getting big sentences, that sort of put me off. And yeah. then I was sort of, then we were up, sort of, we were just, then it, it was just, we was going and thieving. And we, 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 we go, we go, we go out, we'd go out for the day, really. You'd go out and try and lick a monkey yeah, or a grand yeah. to live, the, live, 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 live like, yeah, to live for the day. But yeah, our days were like, our weekends were seven day weekends. That's what I mean, mine was four. Yeah, yeah, we, yeah. we used to party every day of the week. And in the end, it was, it was literally, we go. Man, that's how it was when I was in Chicago, man. That's how I had to re restructure my life, man. Partying seven days a week and getting money to do it. It get rough. It get rough. Fueling that lifestyle is crazy. Uh, get your money, party all night long, get up in the morning, and it was like a continuous cycle yeah, yeah, it was, of drugs, right. violence, and fucking... Thieving. Yeah, and, thieving. Yeah, it was like... Of course it was, mate. Yeah, I was with you all the way there. But obviously I was like knocking about in Lucia, which was my dad's manor, so... You had the snooker hall, we had the Sultan pub, and, and then you had you go down Deptford, you had your speelers down Deptford, or we go down Greenwich or up Blackheath yeah. for the wine bars on a Monday. You should go to a club in Deptford. My bad, hold on. I put, this is the last time I pause it. I um, put these subtitles on because he was talking fast. But now I, I don't really need them anymore, but I'm leaving them on here because it's funny to see. These are auto generators. It's funny to see YouTube try to keep up with what this dude is saying. Yeah, that's funny, okay. The one, Harry Hayward's one. <coughs> yeah, Flash Harry, that was my dad's best mate. Champs, Yeah, it? Champs, and it changed, yeah. it was Cheeks. And then, cheeks, uh, that's it. Cheeks, and someone got stabbed to death outside. They would become Champs, and that's then it. it was SE8s. Right, so it changed again. And then Dave Courtney took it over, and it became future. Well, he didn't take it over. My dad got Dave, it, Harry had a reconstruction order on it. So my dad got in touch with Dave, and said, oh, Dave, do you fancy running this? Then Dave started running it as uh, Futures. Gotcha, yeah, there was I remember them days there again. The yeah, so were, good, uh, they, were, they were like really, really good nights. Yeah, yeah. you and the wipe them out, but I just really love to relive them because they were some excellent times. Oh, I, don't, I, I think they'd wipe me out, that <laughs> would yeah, they? Yeah, come on. Where do you think your activities have got you today? <coughs> today? Fuck yeah. Wiser, up. smarter. Do you know something? <laughs> Ready for the grave, I suppose. No, uh, <laughs> no. Uh, do you know what it is? Looking back, I think it's while I've been writing my dad's book, which is. I think that's been really inspirational for me. Yeah. Because my dad had such an incredible life. Writing my dad's book has been really inspirational yeah. because he is a legendary character. He was the nicest man. A friend of mine I was talking to, I'm very close to, he's very big in the underworld, a friend of mine called Paul from Essex. He sort of looks after me now and sort of has my back. And he's around some very powerful people. Yeah. And he sort of just said, said Jim, I've never heard a bad word said about your dad. And he, even to this day, his legacy carries on. Yeah. And that's very strong for considering he died six years ago. Yeah, of course. But my dad was a gentleman. He would, my dad always said to me, he said, son, forget the gangsters, they're no good. He said, listen, he said, the Cray twins, he said, listen, everybody, he said, all these people want to put themselves out of Cray. He said, there's no value around them, son. He said, he said listen, oh, he said, they're full friends of mine. He said, I've grown up from the age of 12. He said, but son, there's no value. I said, what do you mean? He went, son, he said, you've got two conkers at school, you're playing conkers. He said, 
It's like putting a wing mirror on a conker. I mean, what do you mean, so? He said, well, what, what's the point of having a wing mirror on a conker? There's no value. It's absolutely useless. He said, that's with them, son. He said, he said, son, he said, they are what they are. He said, look, they went to prison at 36. They're, they, 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 they gained their own notoriety for, like, he said, that Reggie was, he said, was his favourite because he was a t- bit of a talker, could have him around. He said, Ronnie, he was a bit twisted and a bit, like, messed up with the medication and that. Yeah, yeah. Charlie was just like a con man who, who was just out to try and grab, grab a monkey. My dad would say, all he ever wanted was a monkey. A monkey, he wanted a, day, a, night, a monkey in his pocket for a night's drinking. It, that was all Charlie ever wanted. A monkey in his pocket for him. So what is a monkey? Like monkey is money? How, is it a certain amount of money? But Okay, here's my question. Now, that's, a, that, like, that's a good point. Gangsters are useless. <laughs> like let, let's let's think about it though. Like what value are you adding to anything like like there's hustlers, there's gangsters, and there's street dudes. Street dudes normally just know the lay of the land. They know how to get by. They know how to get a little money to get you know what I'm saying, get what they need. A hustler a hustler's gonna get it by any means possible. And they normally can conform to any environment. They're like chameleons. I would call myself a hustler. Like, like a chameleon, I could get in anywhere. I could get what I need and, you know. No, but a gangster, what you, what are you doing? What you doing? What you got going on? <laughs> a bunch of negativity. Yeah. But me dad, me dad was obviously close with Charlie and Eddie and obviously Harry Abel. Me dad was, because he was, he was born in Greenwich, me dad. Right. So he was a South East London boy, but yeah. his, his mum was born in Hoxton, in East London. Okay. So we had, so... Two uh, connections. So yeah, but with my dad being a famous boxer, he would go East, West, North, South, he, he could go anywhere he wanted. And he, um, my dad's friends were very powerful people, like Georgie Walker, yeah. who was a, a famous uh, British heavyweight fighter who looked after the old gangster, Billy Hill. But, but George went on to build a Brent Walker, which was a billion, billion pound company. Yep. And they lost it all. They went off to Russia. And very, very powerful man, George. And his daughter ended up married into royalty. Really? Yeah. So he was like one of my dad's closest friends. And then there was Ronnie Olive from South London. Very powerful, big gang boss. Yeah. He never spent a day in jail, same as my dad. And then my dad was very close with Georgie Porritt. I love the Porritts. He had a big mansion up in you know, Rushmore Hill. Yeah, oh, no, Rushmore Hill, yeah. <laughs> they were sort of... Like, like, what I was just saying, like, the gangsters, like, now they're... Now, I'm not saying hustlers are not part of gangs, but they're normally in the hierarchy of them. You know what I'm saying? The hustler, because they have the hustler mindset, they're problem solvers, they get stuff done. They're normally at the top of the food chain. <laughs> they're not out doing, you know, they give, they barking the orders. Just clarification. Well, like, Kenny Noy was up there, wasn't he? Yeah, yeah. And, uh, Scouse Norman, my dad's friend, Scouse Norman Johnson, he was like, he was a big, big player in Liverpool. He uh, yes. had an affair with the Princess of Oman. Really? Oh, and he was, <laughs> and then he also used to work with the Mafia in New York. He worked with Russell Buffalino, who yeah. the film The Irishman was based over. Really? Who Joe Pesky played uh, Russell Buffalino. Wow. Well, but Norma was working with Russell Buffalino in the 70s, 80s, yeah. Yeah, And they, he wrote a book, stuff. a great book called Black Eyes and Blue Blood, but he was one of my dad's closest friends. And it was like a group of them, and they, like, they were like the untouchables. They were like, they'd all got to the... They write, and it was all ex-boxers as well. That yeah. was a funny thing. Yeah. But growing up as a kid, like we'd have Ray Winston come to the house and my dad's best friend I was, film with Ray. Yeah, Ray's lovely. He's wicked, yeah. But my dad's best friend was Paul Moriarty, who yeah. played actually Harry in Lockstock. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It, to the end of, my dad died at uh, Sunrise, no, no, not at uh, Sunrise, he died at uh, Bickley, uh, the nursing home in Bickley. Right, okay. And what happened was, Paul used to visit him every single week. Dave Courtney visited him a few times. Yeah. Uh, we had a lot of famous visitors up there. But yeah, Paul Moriarty visited him every week. And he, he wrote, he's on his last birthday card, he put, to Jim, my hero, thanks for the last 60 years. And that was a, a beautiful, lovely... He played a blinder in that film. Like yeah, that. And long, and long yeah. and Friday he played Razors, didn't he? Yeah, 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 he was wicked. They're just playing that actor in... Uh, he was, he, he, yeah, he's got... And then, imagine there's a kid coming home and like, I've got, like, you've got Paul Moriarty. I mean, it was my 18th birthday party. Yeah. And we had Donald Sutherland, Ryan the Hollywood Lee. actor. Yeah, yeah. Bernie Eccleston, cool. Formula yeah. One motor racing boss. Yeah. Georgie Walker, Justin de Villeneuve, who was the one who made Twiggy famous. Yeah. Uh, we had uh, Bob Geldof. And it was like... And, uh, and then my dad had just done a film called Number One, 
And, uh, number one. No, it was called Number One, and it was based on a snooker player. Uh, right. Called uh, Bob Geldof is a snooker player called Flash. Snooker player? What? The heck? What is snooker? I'm learning new sports. Like a snooker player? Did he just say? Cherry, and there was a. It was. A, it was based in and around Lucian and Deptford, but it was all. But my dad had a big pie in it as well. Did he? Yeah, there was so Sergeant Cryer out of the bill. Yeah, so we all went to the premiere. I remember my mum got the hub because uh, Paula Yates was in there and she had all like airy armpits and she stunk oh, yeah, the hub. I mean, I mean she's not one of those earth, earth <laughs> things, wasn't she? And my mum went, for fuck's sake, can we get out of this fucking lift? It's like, and my mum never swore. She was just like, but my mum could be a little bit like, yeah, yeah, she, yeah. Was, she was the one who wore the trousers with her and my dad. Really? My dad was, uh, he never cheated on me, mum. He was, uh, he was, he was a proper gentleman. Yeah. But if they went out and then anybody, think, my dad would only have to look at you. He was, he had that much power and presence. Yeah, yeah. It was very hard, really, for me to transition over from a boy to a man because of the dad I had. Really? If I, I mean, if I had a dad who was a builder, I'd have been a builder's son. Yeah, that's the thing. Having that, a dad yeah. who I had, I mean, I could have been, if I would have gotten the drugs, I'd have probably been. <coughs> Who knows? You, do, you don't know. But obviously, having the dad I had, it sort of, it opened a lot of doors, but it also closed a lot of doors. Yeah. That's true. How can you forge your own path when your dad got such a big presence, big name? You know, and then you're a junior on top of that. Being a junior of somebody like that is tough. Can do work both ways, can't it? Because yeah. a lot of people yeah. were frightened to have me around because of me, Dad. They wouldn't want to case anything happened. They You're got answered to him, yeah. They're getting their dead, yeah. Or be offensive. And or... I saw me dad sometimes yeah. when, we, when it was in the spill. There was a big shootout one day between a family from Deptford and someone who just took a liberty. And my dad got hold of the geezer coming to spill with a big knife. And that's the first time I'd ever seen me dad go to work. And he went, listen, he, this geezer, his name was, uh, I, could see, I could say his name, can't I? Yeah. Um, I would. No, no, no. Well, he was like, I'll tell you what, I could say his nickname. He yeah. was called The Plum. He, was an, he, he went into oh. Harry Haywood's club once, and Flash Harry's, yeah. stabbed one of the door and right up. Harry's pulled the gun out, come out and shot him as he was running out the club, shot him. Harry Damn shot him. Bro. <laughs> hey, it was like the wild, wild west in London back then, huh? This is like a story gangster background of London. Like, this is crazy. This is like Chicago in the 60s and, and 70s and whatnot. Got him. Yeah, shot him in the ass. But uh, he kept, the geezer was a lunatic. He stabbed up uh, one of the kids on the market store with a big samurai sword on the, on the absolute psychopath. But he came with me dad's spill one day to have a go with me dad. I remember mean, my dad just took the life off him, hit him with the right hand. I've just, I've just, I've never seen, it, it, it was like this geezer's head. It was like saying out of a cartoon. It was like his face went all like distorted. <laughs> yeah. It like yeah. had seven strokes in one. And he just hit the floor. My dad got yeah. the knife and rammed it straight in his shoulder. Yeah. And I thought, I was like, fuck it. And then someone went, get young, don't, don't, don't let young Jim see that. Don't let young Jim see that. Yeah. I was rushed off. They grabbed him round, pulled him up. Then my dad comes and, then I, and I was pulled out the back. Got him, my dad's, my dad had a Rolls Royce at the time, Silver Shadow. We got right. my dad's Rolls Royce and we just drove, drove up. My dad went, oh, son, he was only messing, he was only messing about. He was messing about, yeah. but I knew it wasn't messing about. <laughs> no. Nah, you weren't messing about. That was real deal. Red liquid coming out that boy, wasn't it? Because it was, like, it was quick over and the boys have got me. Run, me, run me to the back of the kitchen and, and then it was the sub bird who was helping me do the teas. She went, no, 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 you've got to go down here, you've got to go down here. And then the next thing you know, Dad was in the car, we shot off. Yeah, you, you get to see it all, didn't you? And they but, try and cover you up. Yeah, and it's like, obviously yeah. you come from the same area as me, Roy, so obviously you know my dad's sort of, like, status. But yeah. he was a gentleman. He would, he, would, he would never take a liberty of anybody. Yeah, no, that's it. If y'all got any documentaries or podcast-type things or, or anything, like, documentaries maybe y'all think I can watch without them being, like, overly down my back, you know what I'm saying? Just leave them, leave them in the comments. And if you like what's going on right now, just hit the like button, man. Because this does got to be the new type of style, man. I like when people sit down and just tell the story instead of reenactments and, and all this other stuff. Because the policies, you know. Yeah, they were good. They, they, yeah. they had their morals. They did in no, those days. They I mean, Dad, today, no, with me, I lost taking, getting into cocaine was like, I would say it's a devil's stuff. It, I lost all, all sense of morality, all sense of respect. Yeah. Yeah. I would have robbed off my own mum. That's the truth. That's how bad it, it, it the, gets. The you, coke got it? me bad. It's, I, How often was you doing it? <laughs> you weird, 
I, I, I've, had, I've had little goes here and then. Uh, it doesn't do the same thing for me now. I think it's totally no, different. No, it's totally different. Though. Yeah, yeah, it's like synthetic. Yeah, years ago. Years ago, it, years ago I look, used to look forward to it. Well, come on, you used to chat rubbish and shit here for Shut hours. Fucking hell, the kitchens, the kitchens, fucking hell. It'd be like, I'm the last one out, I'll pass late in the morning, like the third street. It was a good feeling, wasn't it? You had that was the best feeling in the world. You look forward to it. But it's not that. It's now, there's so much violence with it. It's it's a yeah. different it's a different world now it's i was very lucky to grow up in the 80s i i, I mean obviously i was very gifted i mean my dad put me in the film business i was in the batman movie with jack nicholson at was you really i was a oh, stunt wow. artist under eddie eddie stacy was a stunt coordinator on the film really so, bro got the best life i ever heard like i'm not trying to condone anything that was going on but like he got a storied life like this is like he's He's, he wasn't the main character because his dad and all these other n main characters. But he was like, he was on the verge of being a main character. He wasn't a non-playable character. He was a main person. Like, if you play G GTA, you remember how you could switch over to the next main character? You can switch over to him if you want to. That's tough. I played a little stunt artist on there, so I was getting 120 quid a night yeah. from six at night till six in the morning. Then I would get every time I done a special action, which More is like money. a stunt, I get 25 quid, like pony, yeah. 25 quid. Yeah. And I, obviously, I'd fuck it up on purpose because I think every time you do a take, <laughs> so you might do 17 <laughs> takes. You know, that's, that's, that's a pony a take. So I thought, fuck it up, so I was taking five, six hundred quid a night. Yeah. And I remember buying the first beer, I bought a BMW, three months six, brand spanking new when I was 17. Yeah. But then I thought, why do I want to go to all my mates who are going to work for like for silly money, hundreds of quid a month, and I was earning that annoy. Yeah, nice. Yeah. So, but with the Seems film game, right. you'd phone up Central Casting and go, I'd say, because my dad was Jimmy, you could have two Jimmy's, so I would go, I'd be on my middle name, I'd go, Gary Tippett, every day at four o'clock, they'd go, oh yeah, we've got some work for you, Jimmy. Uh, it's uh, Paradise Club uh, tomorrow, you've got to be at Blackheath, blah, blah, blah. And you go on that call, you get, you get your, your yeah, shit, and you sign it in. It, yeah. and he bro, was a, <laughs> bro was a stunt double. He was a gangster's son. He's a, a author. He just had a good life. <laughs> so flat, I would say it's a it's a very fun life. You get paid out cash at the end of the day. Yeah, it's cash as well, wouldn't it? Yeah, yeah. yeah <coughs> it was yeah. all cash, but I'd done press gang. I'd done a kiss before dying, uh, the Jerry Lou Lewis story. We done it at Hammersmith Palais, and we just oh, sit. Yeah. It was just sitting around all day long yeah, watching yeah, yeah. Him, Dennis Quaid that. perform. Yeah. But it, I really enjoyed that film game, and a lot of my friends like Tony Denham, who's now a big yeah. star. I filmed with Tony. Tony yeah. started. Yeah. Tony, Tony. Funny story with me and Tony. We was on the Batman movie. And uh, we was getting paid out at the end of the film. And uh, it was six in the morning. My dad was the security on the film. And he was looking after Jack Nicholson. So he, when they was paid out, they had thousands to pay out. So they had my dad there when all the money was paid out. And then the stunt guy who played, uh, done all the stunts for Michael Keaton the, in the Batman outfit was a guy called Dave Lee. A martial That's right, arts Dave expert. Lee, yeah, yeah. I think he just recently died. He died, like me, yeah. 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 And he was in the queue and he went to my dad's pal, Dave, the Olds, the, the Johnny and Davey Olds, the twins. He's uh, Davey Olds' son, uh, Dave. He went, uh, uh, excuse me, mate, can I be your back? He took, like, to, to take the piss to sign his name on his chin and he pushed in. <laughs> they went, hey, mate, I don't mind you using me fucking back as a fucking mess. He said, but you're not pushing in, mate. We're all fucking extras. We're queuing up the, the same as you. I went, no, mate, I'm a stunt eyes. And they, he went, do you know who I am? And I remember Dave getting crashed, knocking him spark out of my hand. <laughs> Tony Denham was next to him. But it was funny because we was like, and then I saw Tony obviously rise through the ranks, the same as Tam yeah. has done really well. Tam or yeah, yeah, yeah. <coughs> I've known Tam for 30 years. Oh, it's quite funny because I've filmed with quite a few people, so it was all into the. The fact that he was on a Batman movie, Jack Nichols, like, that's wild. Is that not wild to nobody else but me? Okay, it's just me. It's the same way as us. Where we live, you've got all that. I mean, you've got Jamie Foreman. And, and obviously, Fred, Fred, Fred was a good, close friend of my dad's. And obviously, I knew Greg. Greg had uh, the pub in uh, Farber Village. And then he had the one at, near, yeah. uh, near uh, Widmore, uh, Bromley. You went more green? No, it? no, what's the one? Uh, this, there was a piece, I think you still got it, Ali, with Lisa. Is it the um, the working men's club? Yeah, no, no, that's Jacko's. Then you've got, uh, do, 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 you got the, the Tilney Road. Ah, oh, Tilney Road. Yeah, no, I'll tell you where it is, I'll tell you where it is. It's near the White Horse. Near the White Horse, it's up the end of there, the pub. Yeah, I think I know what yeah, you're talking about yeah, now, yeah. yeah. It'll come to you. So, I mean, after all of that been going on, what was the biggest job that you've actually done? I got accused of a, of a robbery, which is, yeah, it sounds like saying. So. I got accused. <laughs> I got accused. Mm -hmm. That's just as good as saying allegedly. 
they have fucking Ocean's Eleven or something silly like that. But no, a friend of mine was licked on a robbery in 1991. Uh, it was the, what they said it was the world's biggest ever robbery. It was the bearer bond robbery yeah. in uh, the city where 292 million pounds worth of bearer bonds yeah. were stolen off a city broker who was carrying them. Okay. But yeah. my friend Pat Thomas was the so-called mugger at the time, but he, he was accused of taking the bonds. So that later that day, when he'd done the bit of work, we was all at a place called Charlie's Wine Bar in Lucian, yeah, Lucian High Street, which yeah. was one of my dad's friends' bars. Every every villain and hound used, used to go to there. Go in there. It was yeah. like saying out of Goodfellas, and it was the police were watching. You could see the cameras over the road, yeah. twenty four hours a day. You had, it was full of. Think about this, man. There's so many villains, real life villains in the world, that somebody along the way thought about making superheroes. Where they're not real superheroes in the world. There's not. Like, as far as Batman, uh, Avengers, like, there's nobody to combat how many villains there are. And when he say, like, all of these villains congregated, yeah, yeah, you're right. <laughs> Main character villains. He, like he said, his dad never went to jail. That's tough. Rolls Royces and Jags and every face yeah. in London, all the Big Smack boys, anyone who was anyone was in there. Yeah. And the policeman even made a remark later on in a book, a guy called uh, Peter Bleaksley, said, say, if the roof would have gone in that in the light, in, one, in that place, it would have wiped out 90% of South London's that's underworld. Right. Yeah, that's right, yeah, yeah. <coughs> but but no, well. yeah, so Pat, Pat did do the robbery and then Pat yeah. uh, ended up getting shot dead on his door. I'd been out of him that day. He got frisked for a gun at the Ministry of Sound by yeah. the boys refused to go in now yeah. and he got, got found shot dead on his doorstep in Broccoli in the early hours of the morning. But shame. It's a shame and uh, a lot of the sort of crowd and then I used to work with a guy called Eugene Carter. Do you remember Eugene? I don't he was a big time know, drug no. baron. Basically what it was, uh, there was a lot of boys in South London who were, who were using Brinks Back Money right. to put into the other game and obviously yeah. Yeah. it was there was a lot of money around South London and Eugene Cartier they used to call him because he'd have a like, 100 grand Cartier watch on Eugene Cartier Cartier yeah right, his name was Eugene Cartier yeah, yeah, his yeah. uncle was Johnny Carter who used to cut right. Frankie Faye Eugene Cartier that's a W nickname man. even Frankie Faye's had an ongoing knife war for years right okay but everyone said bad things about John but is this uh, people say bad things about everyone people say bad don't. things yeah. listen uh, then people say bad things about me look at social um, media social media let all claim it look if they could if they bother to write a fucking comment like that I could be personally be bothered yeah you couldn't even whisper this sort of stuff years ago do you know what no I mean? no, no, right, no right, that's you've like got full cars blanche <laughs> yeah, but I, I watch a lot of people's podcasts I like Kevin Lane I like Ray Bishop yeah we've done both of them yeah. and I like Terry Ellis a lot of these people yeah. they're, they're the real deal very very strong hard men and they've and they've been and they've got a story to tell, and it, it, and it, it's, it's 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 how life has treated somebody. Yeah. It's and you only get out what like you what you put in now. You know, it's unfortunate that they're, they're, you're born in <coughs> sort of stuff, and as I said before, it's in your blood, and you know you could be a, a bricklayer or a carpenter or whatever. You know what's crazy, man? People from the outside looking in, they don't even realize that some people are born into this, and they have no, like, sure, yes, you do have an option at the end of the day, but when you're surrounded by it. It only seemed like one option. You don't know anything else because it's not presented to you. You don't know what's going on. Whatever. To be honest, I don't think, even if I had the dad I had, I think I'd still be a little fucker. That's, oh, that oh just, yeah, I think we'd have still got that yeah. upbringing that we did. I, I, listen, I always wanted to be better than everybody else. I loved a bit of, I loved a nice bit of designer clothes. I always loved the kettle. Yeah. And always wanted to stand out for the crowd. Yeah, you and I suppose being naughty was the only way what was going to make me stand out. You always see the boys with the Pharaoh and the Gabichis and the... Uh, and the kid always had the Gabichis with the Lacoste. sway pocket, a little gold, yeah. Yeah, the Lacoste come out, didn't you see? He's got loads of money in him, that must be cake. Bit of Peter Card, didn't you, it? Yeah, <laughs> fucking hell. <laughs> oh my God, we got that memory lane here. God. But what, when you've um, when you done these jobs and, uh, you know, doing a couple of big jobs, there's a few stories flying about. Did you sort of invest the money wisely or... No, I used to... I, 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 I went out. No, he told us this earlier in the... <laughs> no. He said he was living for the day. That ain't changed. I bought, I think the first job we ever done, I was only young, I was about 19. I had about 45 quid, 40, 45 grand. And I went out and bought a Mercedes Cosworth, 190 Cosworth. Yeah, I remember that. A little gold midi Rolex. Yeah. I had a wild weekend at Lime Light and I was skinned. So you like your watches? Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. Do you know what it is? Funny enough, that one, my parents bought me that on my 18th birthday. And, uh, 
It's funny because uh, I sold it. I was in Miami a year later. I skinned and sold it. No, so yeah. when obviously when, I, when my mum left me, skinned me and broke right. A bit of watches that I cashed one in and, and, and bought this one. The same watch what I had when I was 18. Right, got you. Yeah, Just because yeah, it's, yeah. it's got memories for me. But I love watches. Yeah. I buy and sell watches now. I flip watches. I, I, I do really well with watches. I, I flip watches. But I don't really wear them. If I'm going out in the evening, I won't wear them. Right, okay. <coughs> it's like I mean, I mean look yeah. at London now. I mean, they're getting ripped off. Their I used to fucking. Yeah, I was about to say, you wear a watch, man. Didn't a soccer player get robbed in London? A football player get robbed for his watch in London? You can't even wear them. You buy it nice. That's around the world. Hidden licks is like a. It's like a job now. I licked enough watches in my life from that fucking, and now it's fucking, I thought fucking, that would be the no one, the person who's nicked it, they're not getting nicked. Yeah, yeah. But uh, I don't want to know. Uh, no, London's changed for me now. I still love going, I love Mayfair. I love well, have, you got, have you got a motorbike or a, um, one of them scooter things and you're driving around just, just as you drive past, you're grabbing phones out of people's hands? I know, it's it's, brutal listen, now, I don't, I, I, I'm very, very low key in London if I go to London now. I sort of, I tend to go to restaurants which are high up or we go and get a lift to go up. It, yeah, you, it's, yeah. it's like, especially Mayfair, it's like hunting ground. You, yeah, of course it is. You've got, the, you've got the richest people in the world, haven't you? And so you, then you get all the, like, the little predators there. Yeah. Waiting on the street corners, waiting for their, waiting for their little chance. Yeah, that's it. Just watching and. It's like what I say to it. people. Listen, it, it's weird. If I, Sound like California. If I, if I was like the way I saw it, or I sort of, people would say that Phoebe, oh, what a disgusting thing. What, but, but listen, if I woke up and I was hungry. Excuse me, what kind of car do you drive? Uh, a 2014 Corolla. Why? And how much do you pay for car insurance each month? I've got to go and get something. Yeah, I've yeah. got to go and nick something to, 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 feel, to feel fed. Yeah. If a lion's in the jungle, it don't say to the little baby antelope, oh, I'm gonna feel, oh, oh, oh you can't do that because you're not allowed to do that. It grabs it and kills it because yeah. it has to. Yeah, it, it's, true. It's, it's a cycle of life. And unfortunately, some people... But you know what separates us from a wild animal? Cognitive thinking. <laughs> We can think about stuff. We can, we can, we can make a plan. We can, we can, you know what I'm saying? So comparing yourself to a wild animal is kind of wild in itself. You know what I'm saying? Because that's literally not the case. But I get it. I get what you're saying. People are stronger than others. And if, I mean, they're, 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 there's laws there, but you know yourself, the government break more laws than anyone. Of course they do, yeah, there's no, no loyalty anywhere anymore. But no. I mean, we used to do it just to be able to go out and pay for the Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday nights. To well, you wouldn't you sell it, you'd wrap it, sell a few wraps of coke, sell a few wraps of salt, sell a few Aussies. I mean, you wouldn't see no harm in that, but now you, you, yeah. now you fucking, you, you're getting a big prison sentence, and you, you'd always get a prison sentence then, but you'd always get a big prison sentence, but now you get your pocker. So crime doesn't pay now. No. I mean, I just had to pay a big pocket, and it's, it's, well, it wiped out most of my inheritance. We'll get up to that in a minute, but yeah. well, have you ever been to prison? Yeah, I first went to prison in 1993. I went to High Down Prison. For? That was for theft. Theft of a Rolex, funny enough. Theft of a Rolex. Theft of a Rolex. Well, well, not, not on a moped, many of you were. <coughs> no, this was, uh, he'd given it to sell, and then I, I just didn't come back with the money. Uh, and right. it was low, I got uh, six months judgment. It was a short, sharp shock. I remember going into that van, and the funny thing was, yeah. it was weird, because the geezer who put me on the van, it was a geezer I'd knocked out at school. No, you're joking. It, I remember his name, I can't remember his name, but his name was Brian, a big old lump. And, he, and he, I remember he had, he had like a horrible smirk on his face, you know, like, <laughs> it was like, it was Prefix like. Prefix smirk. Yeah, and I remember he put, cuffing me up and putting me into the little fucking, the little cubicle. Yeah. And when I got to eye down, it was a, you know, a bandstand in Surrey, and it was like, I got there and I thought, oh. it was like, it was like, it was like a bad dream. The, the school's giving me blankets, me, me plastic plate and cup and that. Lock me in my cell. There was no TVs then in those days. You'd have to buy your own radio. And this was 93. Yeah. And I remember... That sounds terrible. So in 93, I wouldn't play on Xboxes. It was only this year. 2010 and up. Laid down a bit. I remember in the morning, it was like, and then you could all just hear those, the doors, the keys opening oh, all the bro. doors up and all the echo. And they went down to breakfast, like two slices of bread, like, bread toast and a, a boiled egg and a bit of beans. I thought, oh, fuck this, this is all. No ham, no bacon, no sausage, no. They gave you beans for protein. That's, that's. That alone should make people want to stay away from crime. Like, come on, man, I, I, what I'm supposed to eat? I'm supposed to eat beans, toast, and, 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 and what do you say? What else do you say? And a boiled egg? That's tough.
Oh. Is that when it hit home? Is that that, it yeah, hit? but then, then obviously I got nicked on an attempted murder. Funny enough, you probably remember this. Uh, it was at the Homestone Road, there was a pub. Yeah. I was nicked with, uh, well, I, I took the nick in, but they said it was me, one of the Arifs, the young Arifs, uh, Mark Zanelli, and a guy called Johnny Haywood, who later got on 18 years with Stevie Poet on the, they went to work on it with like machine gun back 10. Yeah. And uh, we went in the pub, when well, they said we went in the pub, they said we went in the pub, pulled this. I can remember now, allegedly. Guy out. He got, they said I stuck, they said I stuck a 10 inch knife in him, yeah. which narrowly missed his heart. And then someone else CS gas the pub. It was right. uh, the Lord Homesdale. Yes, yeah, well, Lord Homesdale. The, yeah, I was yeah, it, it was on the front enough. page. Of, it was on yeah. the front page of the news <laughs> shopper. How many stories did Jimmy Tippett got? And this is the junior. How many stories does he got? In, in this 45 minutes, he's told at least 12 stories. Like 12 stories that would be enough. One of these stories alone would be enough for the average person. Like, I, right, I got to chill out. <laughs> Bro got 12 of these. CS gas gang attack pub. Yeah, I got yeah. nicked for it. They said I was the knife man. So yeah. I got nicked. I spent 12 weeks on remand. Right. Uh, I down for it. And when I was there, funny enough, I was with, I was with Perry Taroni, Emery Page, Ronnie Easterbrook. I was away with Ronnie. Really? Uh, yeah, and it was so funny to see Ronnie inside yeah, after course. Like, seeing him in the spill for years. You feel a bit safer, I mean, Yeah, and, 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 and then the Brian, Rob, Brian, Brian Robinson was in there. Yeah, yeah, the yeah. Colonel, yeah Brian, and the Brian yeah, went, hello, Jimmy. He said, oh, yeah. your dad saved me life one day. And I was around every, and it was like proper old Sidney Carter, who right. just recently died. Yeah. Uh, Champagne Sid, they used to call him the best cat burglar in London. Yeah. And I was around all the, all the, all the proper boys, and like, we're Sydney Carter, that sounds interesting. Save that. <laughs> oh, we, we was living we was living life good in there. Then I thought, then I, thought I don't really need my own prison now. I was a bit yeah. going to leave them. And all of a sudden, one day they come and <coughs> screws went pack your kit tip it. All your charges have been dropped. So you're, you're going. Really? But uh, then the police were waiting outside for me. I remember his name, DC Phillips. He was uh, like an ex rugby <laughs> copper. He had a bit of a limp. Scary looking fucker. Don't actually. forget their name. But though, scary, no, like. scary looking fucker he was. <laughs> and he went. Jimmy, he said, just to let you know, we know you've done that. He said, but uh, we, uh, we know you set, sent people to the hospital, blah, 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 which I never did, but obviously my friends might have done, I don't know, but uh, I, I, I was hoping so, but no, they said, we know you've done it, he, you're lucky, you're lucky. He, 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 lucky, he was lucky to live. Yeah. But uh, obviously that was my sort of a little notch into me being a bit of a lunatic. Yeah. And then I also obviously had John and... Johnny Mister and Paul Stockton behind me if things got too wrong. Yeah, yeah, you're safe with them too, aren't but you? But yeah, really? so it's not to blow me nose again, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> but there was a... Oh, there was some amazing things, because if being around Bobby... That's from all that booger sugar you didn't inhale. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! My bad. Would you remember Michael Fitzpatrick? Yes. Yeah, so you remember that murder? Yes, I do, one of the yeah. women underneath it, yeah. Because what had happened is, Michael owed a friend of my dad some money, so my yeah. dad went up to the, the scrapyard. Yeah. I went, Michael, where's his bit of money? And Michael, obviously everyone was terrified of my dad. And Michael went, oh, I'll get the money, I'll get the money, I'll get the money. He paid him, and that's at the same time, the woman, uh, it was his mother-in-law, wasn't it? Yes. Yeah, apparently they, they'd got her, didn't they? They, they kidnapped her yeah. in the car. Well, for the money, insurance money, for the, No, for the, the geezer invented the power shower, didn't he, the dad? Yeah. The, the dad. Oh, was but it I a demand? He, sorry? Was it a demand for money? No, it, what happened was, so it, from, what, from what you hear in the story, is uh, I, so I think the, the father-in-law approached Michael yep. to get rid of her. That's right, yeah. And Michael, I always liked Michael, but Michael always had that, he was like the Grim Reaper. He could yeah. have a fight, couldn't he? But he had, he had darkness to darkness, him. Yeah, Paul stopped yeah. even said he, because Paul done the black magic. That's right, Michael yeah. Fitzpatrick had that, he had a dark aura about him. Yeah. You, you, you wouldn't want to fuck about with Michael, because he, he would take it that little ne next step further. Yeah. And uh, Michael ended up paying me. There's a, a lot of people in Chicago like Michael. Dad terrified of me, Dad, so that's what I said. The, the devil got his comeuppance. But no, then when she got murdered, there was a lot, of, the body was being moved about, wasn't it? Quite that's a few right, places yeah, at the time. Or it was like, it was like the big news of the 90s at the time, yeah, wasn't it? Yeah. But Michael then went off with uh, Pickle, didn't he? They was doing the armed robbers. Pickles, yeah, but, yeah. He died of cancer a few years that's ago, right, didn't he? Yeah, he was yeah. only 49. That's what I mean, it's no age to die, is it? I've got a friend of mine at the moment, a uh, boxer, Mark Potter. He's 47, he's dying of cancer. Strong as an ox. But that's what I'm saying, that he lived a healthy life. Yeah. And it's me, I'm 51, partying for 30 years. Yeah, same I've done more harm to myself than I know what's good. And, still and I'm still strong as an ox, yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's weird, isn't it? How it it's works, weird, how it's... I mean, when going back to the prison, <coughs> um, so when you had. We're having a conversation with my friends, like, dang, it'd be crazy, like, 
you be looking at the like world, like all these innocent people staying away from this, staying away from doing all these good things. They be getting deceased early, man. They be gone early. Then you take a look at somebody like, you know, just somebody that's not living good. And they just thriving, living a, a long life. You know what I'm saying? I was having a convo not long ago, man. It's funny that it came up. Sort of partners or girlfriends or whatever. And that's what I wasn't being, do you know, back then I was seeing a girl from Bermondsey. She used to come and see me. It was, that girls were like very, we weren't really, really, we, it was, I didn't have a lot of relationships in the 90s. It was more girlfriends for a few nights. So it was, yeah, yeah, you just it sort of was a girlfriend. Of the game. Yeah. Uh, I'm here for a good time, not a long time, you know, Jimmy. <laughs> that's funny. It was yeah. a girlfriend for the night, yeah. When you was in prison, did you, when you was in prison, did you learn a lot more about the criminal underworld? Of course you do, because you see how people are getting caught. You see how people could have not got caught. It's the University of... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that, it's the University of Criminals. <laughs> cool. Crime, isn't it? It's the University of Crime. It's like the University for Criminals. Because you're learning each of these occupations, you're taking those... I mean, I met some fraudsters in there and some business, but I've earned an awful lot of money out of people I met in jail. I met an old farmer once in jail. And he said to me, oh, please come and see me. He had, he had stashed away nearly five million pounds worth of gold. Wow. Which his friend had got on a robbery, yeah. but then died in France. No. And had a heart attack with, with, with his mistress in France. But the farmer was so straight up, he'd been, he'd been nicked for something to do with his tax returns, yeah. but then told me, said, I've got all this gold, how do I get rid of it? No, mate. Fuck it off. What well, died much to I, 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 <laughs> So, for say, I had a good couple of years of uh, living after meeting the farmer. I had some great times. That's the next question. Is uh, did you like acquire any? Uh, did you acquire any friends in this business? Yeah, loads, of loads. Course. Listen, uh, obviously, listen. I know, I, through my dad, I know. I, I'm not going to mention names, but I know the top firms in London. I know everybody, yeah. whether we're good or bad. But I know everybody. But uh, and it's uh, oh yeah, in prison. I, 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 met, I met a lot of good friends in prison. But obviously, there is no one among us thieves. No. And if they could get one over on you, it's people, you see money changes people. Yeah, it does, doesn't it? And I've seen that firsthand with, with myself when I've come into money and, and bits and pieces. And uh, it's, now I'd rather choose my friends very carefully. I have a very small mm -hmm. bunch of friends on one hand. Yeah, we're it's checking out awesome. social media. We've got about 37 connected friends in Have our we? group. Yeah, it's like... <coughs> like but it's social, me social, me social media's been good, but I find yeah. <coughs> Instagram I like, because that fits in with my lifestyle, all the glitz and glamour. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, there's certain faces in London, there's like, their lifestyles are like out of the Viz comic. Yeah. Where I like to think my lifestyle comes out of Hello Magazine. <laughs> I've always got a beautiful woman in tow. I like to drink the best champagne, I like yeah. to eat the best food. The best food and I travel yeah. to the best places, and I love the nicest clothes. It's perfect for that, isn't it, Instagram? Of course it is. But and it I think my life, but Facebook, I find, is a lot of... Uh, for more personal too. Foodsters, haters, yeah. people with no lives who look down on other people's but would love to see you like, say if someone thought, oh, Jimmy walks in front of the road, they got hit by a bus, he's in a wheelchair, he's lost all his money, he ain't got nothing and his girlfriend's run off with a football player. They'd, oh, they'd love it, they'd, yeah, they'd absolutely they'd, yeah, love it. Yeah. But unfortunately, that's never going to happen. No, because, uh, like, I'm not going to lie, at 51, he has a great take on social media. That's literally what it is, Facebook and I mean Instagram. Even though they're owned by the same company, they're two different completely platforms, man. That's crazy. Yeah, I'm one of those people who gets knocked down and comes back ten times higher. But yes, mate, I know what you mean. But have you have, have you, like experienced any problems with people on social media? Yeah, I've got, I've found a, a lot of haters. I mean, I would love to name them, but uh, I, the joy is, I normally find it's the failed writers. You know, people. I got approached by John Blake to write a book. Right. He approached me and said, Jimmy, your dad won't write a book, but dad didn't agree with it. Okay. And my dad said, and that, but he said, I would love to get your story, your book, you sound a fascinating character. And John Blake is like the hierarchy of the publishers. Okay. Yeah. Like he done Roy Shaw's, Lenny McLean's. Okay. Carl I'm not gonna lie, Jimmy, you do got an interesting life. <laughs> Oh. Leech, he's done anyone, uh, Cass Pennant, he's done it. Anyone who's anyone in the crit, like uh, the uh, Ronnie Knight, uh, Chopper, Chopper Reed, he's done all the top people. So uh, when he done that, I, was, I think a lot of people on social media, there was a few people sort of 
Everyone, everyone wants to write a book. Everyone's got a story to tell. Yeah. But, 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 but not everyone wants to read that story. That story might That's not have problem, any yeah. enough interesting chapters. Yeah. But uh, a few people on Facebook, is, I'd love to lay one of them, but I, enjoy it. That would, I wouldn't even waste my air time with him. Yeah. I think he'd done a podcast with him once. But it, it, they write books, they publish them themselves, because they can't get them published by it. Because now to write a book, you have to have a literary agent who submits that to a publisher. That's right. It's and they have a bidding war for your, for your memoirs. Yeah, it's hard enough. Now, I, can have, I have publishers calling me all the time to write new books. Really? Yeah, because they know I've got a great story to tell. I have people message me on social media and say, your life, oh, you give me inspiration. I look at your life on social media and see your beautiful girlfriend and what, how, how you live and what you get up to. And the first thing I do in the morning is, is put on social media to see what you're up to. And it's not nice that you could, and sometimes I, I do send people nice messages back because, but you, there, there is those secret haters out there who, 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 who hate to see you get on. Oh yeah. But then those haters make me appreciate, they make me, they, 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 they make me, they make me work even harder. Man. Because they're, they're the ones I really want to wipe the smile off their faces. But they couldn't even smile anyway. Yeah. If you ain't got no haters, you ain't popping anyway. Well, we're going to wrap it up there now for running to the end of part Thank one. Um, that was absolutely excellent, Jimmy. And we're going to go into part two, so look out for this. Thanks, part I don't know if there's a part two, but part one was pretty, pretty, pretty decorated, story. There's a lot. He got a lot going on in his life, man. Taylor, let me know if there's anybody. If y'all got any suggestions in the comments, if y'all like this, hit the like button. Man.